This is Eating Disorders and Obesity with Dr. Gooden, um, supplemented um, by um, some expertise uh, from uh, Vanessa DeBrot, a exercise physiologist uh, friend of mine. Um, so, eating disorders are characterized by severe disturbance in what? Eating behaviors. Okay, anorexia nervosa, also known as AN, means lack of appetite. Inter sorry, lack of appetite induced by nervousness. That was originally uh, what it was thought to be about. Um, anorexia is not a new problem; it is centuries old. It was thought to be about nervousness. This is a misnomer. It is really an intense fear of gaining weight or becoming fat, combined with a refusal to maintain even a minimally low body weight. Um, now, there's an issue with the DSM changing, thankfully. Um, uh, Postmenarchial females must stop menstruating, in, in other words, have amenorrhea, is what it's called, in order to be diagnosed with a disorder. disorder. Um, to include males in this issue, as you see, males are, uh, have, have um, problems as well. Um, this is increasing, uh, probably uh, a, a whole lot. Um, DSM-5 criteria um, altered that amenorrhea um, distinction so that eating disorders were less gender biased. Uh, there are new efforts to include uh, men in eating disorder studies. Since men can't have amenorrhea, they can't be diagnosed with amenorrhea previously. Um, new diagnosis involves um, replacement with physiological consequences of, of semi-starvation, such as hypothermia, low blood pressure, and this uh, lanugo, which is um, it's a downy hair growth. Okay. Um, So the two types of anorexia nervosa, restricting type, ANR, anorexia nervosa restrictive, and binge eating, purging type, ANBP. Um, ANR is the restricting type uh, that limits their quantity of food. Tight control of caloric intake, avoid eating publicly, eat excessively slowly, very small pieces, or secretly dispose of the food rather than eating it. ANBP, anorexia nervosa, binge purging type, um, either binge purge or binge and purge. Okay. Now, what do these things mean? Let's make sure we know. Binging it involves an out of control consumption of an amount of food that is far greater than what most people would eat in the same amount of time and under the same circumstances. Purging is compensating for that eating, getting rid of it, trying to undo it. It often follows a binge. Remove from their bodies the food they have eaten. Self-inducing vomiting, misusing laxatives, diuretics, and enemas may compensate also by exercise or fasting. Uh, and note that some careers, uh, ballet dancers, um, because the artistic standards of their profession, which is a slender physique, are at higher risk for eating disorders. Uh, modeling, gymnastics, wrestling, weightlifting, MMA, uh, even the military. Um, might might uh, be influenced to uh, to have an eating disorder at times. Uh, bulimia nervosa, or BN, B as in boy, N, is characterized by uncontrollable binge eating and efforts to prevent resulting weight gain by using inappropriate behaviors such as self-inducing vomiting and excessive exercise. The word bulimia comes from the Greek word boios, which means ox, and limos, which means hunger, to denote a hunger of such proportions that the person could eat an ox. The difference between a person with bulimia nervosa and a person with the binge eating purging type of anorexia nervosa, so BN versus ANBP, is weight. Okay. Difference is weight. Okay. By definition, the person with anorexia nervosa is severely underweight. This is not true for bulimia nervosa. Now, there is a bulimia nervosa restrictive type as well called BNR. Um, now, there's a higher mortality rate with AN than BN, 
anorexia as opposed to bulimia. Uh, they'll both share this fear of becoming fat. Uh, bulimics are typically normal weight or even slightly overweight. Now here's some of the more of the uh, exercise physiology uh, information. Um, you might wonder how can you purge, sorry, how can you purge and still be overweight as, as in bulimia? Well similar to dieting, the research shows that uh, people gain weight despite their attempts to compensate, to purge, and to diet. question is why? Well, while dieting it is common for individuals to restrict their meals, in doing so, studies show that individuals overcompensate once they finish dieting and overindulge while preparing for a diet. They might say, I'll start my diet on Monday and eat everything I want this weekend. Think of anorexia as over control of eating behaviors and bulimia as out of control eating behaviors. Bulimics try to control their eating but when they fail they fail hard and eat a lot. The main idea behind all eating disorders is that it, is that it creates very unhealthy body chemistry and metabolism that can result in destruction of bodily organs and systems like our kidneys. Since it often starts in adolescence it stunts development physically and emotionally and socially. Uh, these people may be immature and socially awkward. Um, and this just serves to reinforce the drive to be liked for their appearance. Twin studies um, have shown more genetic links with anorexia than bulimia. As with dieting, bulimia, this less controlled behavior, usually results in a one step forward, two steps back weight um, loss, greater weight gain that occurs between diets. Impulsivity is common. Eating the chocolate cake your friend left at your house, all of it. It may spur a binge of junk food. It's this all or nothing dichotomous thinking at the core of bulimia that says if I messed up eating one bad thing I might as well eat all the bad things. Um, dieting is often modeled by parents. It exposes at-risk individuals to binge purge patterns. Dieting involves increased risk for uh, eating disorders. Parents may often model this and reinforce unrealistic physical attributes and overattention, as does society, of course. Parents, however, may have more of a direct influence than society, whereas societal influences are more covert or passive. Um, advertising is a big issue. There's an attractive model eating a cheeseburger. Well, how do I make that work? Um, uh, it's just a poster for eating disorders, how to eat a cheeseburger and still be skinny. Um, anorexia involves a perfectionist, compulsive, disciplined, susceptible to false beliefs towards reality. Compliments just serve as reinforcement of what they are already doing. So the question is, is it a bad idea to compliment someone on their weight loss? Well, not if they're doing it in healthy ways. Bulimia involves compensatory behaviors um, to, to fix what has been done. The damage is I ate a whole lot. To compensate for that, I will vomit or use a laxative, a diuretic, over-exercise. It incites a retention of the energy that is absorbed from foods after purging episodes. So I'm trying to get you to understand what the body actually, what you're telling your body when you vomit when you overeat and then vomit. Um, your body uh, is very simple in the way it, it reads this information. Uh, it incites a retention of the energy, a, a holding on tightly um, to the energy that is absorbed from foods after the purging episode. It's a survival mechanism. If your body is depleted of resources, it's going to do everything it can to compensate for it when nutrients are reintroduced to the system. There's an influ influx of energy in the body. It's used to stabilize body resources. So the body wants to store more fat, more fluid, etc. It's this uh, crisis mode and survival stage. Your metabolism, which is your energy breakdown and buildup, your its efficiency, your metabolism efficiency is decreased if you fast for long periods of time. Okay, four steps of starvation mode, um, and, 
and this is just trying to explain to you how how our body does this, how we get from dieting to a disorder, things like this. After you eat, your body has a rapid increase in energy in the blood, which is transported to needed areas like your organs. This is food to organ usage. If there's too much energy not being used, it will be stored as fat, concentrated energy that takes a long time to break down once it is stored. This is food going to storage. Your body first uses the more accessible energy in the blood, your glucose. If you fast or do not eat and do not resupply your energy, your glucose in the blood from food breaking down, your body will use something else. What will it use? Will it use your fat and you'll get skinny? Well, you might get skinny, but it's not because it uses your fat. If you don't eat, your body will use your glycogen reserves, your stored glucose in your muscle, which is more easily accessible than fat. So you're going to take that muscle away before you start working on any fat. Um, so it's very, very bad for the body. When your easily accessible energies are depleting, your body begins to shift from a fasting stage to a starvation mode. In reaching this critical period, would take days or weeks of insufficient food, energy, calories, depending on the severity of fasting and insufficient eating. Your body will begin to rely on proteins, several different types, rely on fats, and ketones. Ketones are really important. The main thing to take away from ketone and protein breakdown is that serotonin precursors are stolen. Uh, the blood pH becomes acidic, blood gets thicker, the body has to work harder. But notice that blood, serotonin precursors, the, the building blocks of serotonin, are stolen. In other words, we, we can't use those. Those are things we've been talking about um, with mental issues, right? We need serotonin, uh, but it's being used to keep our body alive. This results in a buildup of fluid in our tissues, uh, possible organ failure, seizures, brain chemistry imbalance, that's that serotonin, fainting, death. Fainting occurs when the brain is not getting enough energy or oxygen, which occurs during the adapted survival mode. So. If a person ever faints, it doesn't mean they have an eating disorder, but you might want to ask him, ask them, when was the last time you ate? They may be in dire need of food. Um, if you happen to have 15 milligram glucose tablets on you, give them to them every 15 minutes if you have it. Or uh, most of us, I don't think, carry that around, so half a banana, four pieces of candy, or orange juice are the equivalent. This is fast sugar or fast glucose sources, uh, mostly. Their state of nutrient deficiency may cause damage and brain cells dying until they get their glucose and oxygen back to normal levels. Glucose intakes helps oxygen stabilization. Um, it can otherwise lead to seizures in extreme cases. Also, you want to have an expert, of course. Check them out. Ask for a first aid kit. Check their glucose levels. Have someone call 911. It's best to be safe. Bulimia complications, electrolyte imbalances, which can lead to major complications, the destruction of organ function, especially the kidneys. Individuals should be carefully reintroduced to depleted nutrients by a medical professional. Purging also causes teeth to rot and cheeks to swell, uh, swollen from glands, from the, the vomit assist, acidity. Uh, malnourishment is common and nutrients are not absorbed. With anorexia, we have medical complications as well. When the body weight gets too low, the tissues from major organs will begin to be broken. Uh, sorry, when body weight gets too low, the tissues from major organs will begin to be broken down. We don't want that. We need to keep those tissues in our body organs. The body will literally start breaking itself down. To treat these things, anorexia, we use family therapy, bulimia, cognitive behavioral therapy, and medicines such as SSRIs. So let, let's break down the process just a little bit further. The process of anorexia it begins with a perfectionist attitude, a need for control. The person exhibits control, feeling of power by dieting and exercising, very regimented with notebooks sometimes. They feel a sense of achievement by succeeding with weight loss and body image. They're reinforced by looking in the mirror and measuring themselves on the scale. 
and other people saying nice things, but it's never good enough. They're temporarily comforted, but they require continued demonstration of control and achievement. They set new goals with higher standards. I want to be lower weight, thinner, prettier, stronger, and faster. They repeat their self and social reinforcement pattern and receive temporary comfort again on and on. They develop unrealistic ideals that this person can always do more and should since they can. They have a drive or compulsion that results in altered or unrealistic body expectations to facilitate their continued need to feel complete. They may feel isolation due to ignoring, being ignored, being avoided, people being concerned about them. Uh, notice that control is a really big issue um, in most mental illness, um, including these. Uh, the process of bulimia. Uh, bulimia begins with good intentions, dieting and low calorie foods, one drops some weight, uh, but when we eat a forbidden food, the bulimic um, will eat some junk food and get into a, a stage of uncontrolled eating of anything available. This is called binging. They, that results in disgust with oneself or shame in their own identity and their behavior. What do they do? They want to hide the evidence. They want to undo what they just did. They develop a plan to undo what has just been done secretly, retaking control. There's that word again, control. They implement a plan. They, they will vomit it out. They will use laxatives, use diuretics such as caffeine or amphetamines, excessive exercise. Then they're going to pretend it's all okay until they repeat again. They have good intentions for weight loss again. Self-image results in future binging and purging or compensatory cycles. Uh, so note the importance of feeling control on these disorders and in each of our lives. Think about how you yourself meet your need for control. Um, of course, there's eating disorders not otherwise specified and binge eating disorders, uh, or BED. AN and BN, anorexia and bulimia, onset uh, normally in adolescents. AN normally between 15 and 19 years of age, while bulimia nervosa between 20 and 24. Whereas BED, uh, binge eating disorder, is between normally uh, 30 years of age to 50 years of age. Females are 10 times more likely to have eating disorders, but males are increasing and uh, underreported. Males are more and more being objectified uh, in the same ways as females. Not exactly the same ways, of course, but um, in very uh, unhealthy ways. Um, Anorexia has highest mortality rate of any psychiatric disorder at 3%. Difficulty with cold temperatures, low blood pressure, feeling tired, weak, dizzy, and faint are common. Vitamin B1 deficiency increases the chances of depression and cognitive functioning. They have increased risk for osteoporosis in later life. Possible death due to heart arrhythmia, um, that's due to the electrolyte imbalance that is caused chronically low levels of potassium, which is called hypokalemia, can also result in kidney damage and renal failure, severe enough to require dialysis. Bulimia nervosa um, purging has risks. Uh, leads again to electrolyte imbalance, which um, leads to heart risk, heart muscle damage. Also calloused hands and tears in the throat uh, used uh, from vomit inducing objects, uh, stomach acid um, and, and and may result in a lot of teeth tooth damage and decay as well um, from all that acid. Um, note that brushing teeth immediately after vomiting damages teeth even more. Uh, mouth ulcers and dental ca cavities um, um, increase risk for oral cancer. Red dots around the eyes are common. That's due to pressure from throwing up um, actually in the in the face. Um, uh, it breaks capillaries and blood vessels. Um, they have swollen salivary glands and often these puffy chipmunk cheeks. Chipmunk cheeks may reinforce that belief that the person is fat. Suicide is an issue. It's common for anorexia nervosa uh, individuals. 3 to 23 percent of them attempted. Uh, 50, they're 50 times 
more likely to complete than the general population. Um, and bulimia nervosa, um, 25 to 35 percent um, attempt suicide. Recovery in anorexia is 50 percent and 70 percent in bulimia. Stress fractures are going to be common in women, and this, this can be a red flag for malnutrition and possible eating disorders, especially for high school and college students. Um, now, what does this word crossover mean? Okay, uh, crossover means that um, it is common for people to transition from one eating disorder to another, uh, from anorexia nervosa restrictive type to anorexia nervosa binging purging to uh, bulimia nervosa for instance. Eating disorder prevalence in Iran is comparable to the United States. Caucasians are overrepresented with eating disorders culturally, possibly due to this culturally prescribed thin ideal. Anorexia nervosa is not due to Western ideals alone, but bulimia nervosa is greatly influenced by our Western ideals and culture. Uh, think about Hollywood. There's this emphasis on weight and appearance, having we also have an easy and anonymous access to large amounts of food. There's privacy for purging. Genetics influence individual differences that may increase eating disorder vulnerability. Um, eating disorders can run in families, but a family meal three times a week at the dinner table, no distractions like the TV, is associated with this decreased risk of eating disorders. Eating disorders are linked to serotonin. Serotonin affects moods and eating and impulsivity. Note that by cutting carbs, which are the building blocks of serotonin, eating disorders further deplete serotonin. A set point is something we all have. It's sort of a biologically determined weight that our individual bodies try to defend. If I'm under that weight, I'm going to be more hungry more of the time. Um, it's defended by hunger. The societal influence on body image is from magazines, advertisements, all the photoshopping uh, that, that gives us unrealistic goals. Um, this, a lot of this started in the 1960s 60s with what was called the Thinness Revolution. Uh, that was first influenced by a model um, who was made famous with the name of Twiggy. Um, later, Kate, Kate Moss became quite famous, and she was famous uh, with the word Rexy, which is obviously a derivation of the word anorexia and sexy. She was Rexy. New efforts in fashion industry have come about to exclude in, in some areas excessively thin models. Um, but we still in our culture even uh, around the college campuses um, we have uh, this thing called drunkorexia as well. A common term for young ladies who refrain from eating to save their daily caloric intake for drinking. Uh, this causes a risk of malnutrition. The case of Fiji is, is really interesting. They had no eating disorders, but they had no TVs. When they got TVs and started watching Western television, eating disorders developed very, very quickly. Uh, going back a little to families again, uh, anorexic uh, families, not to say the whole family is anorexic, but there's an anorexic in the family. These families are commonly dysfunctional, high rigidity, overprotectiveness, marital discord, perfectionism. A family member with an eating disorder also influences that family, family dynamic in return. Uh, bulimia and nervosa families also have high parental expectations, family members dieting, critical comments about shape, weight, or eating. Critical comments. Um, they may have neglect via food insufficiency. Um, and that's associated with bulimia nervosa. Uh, its strongest predictor is disparaging comments about the woman's or man's appearance and focus on his or her need to diet by family members. Uh, this was studied in a sample of college students and leads to a negative body image. Uh, binge eating disorder is more common in males, BED. The thin ideal influences risk factors for eating disorders, body dissatisfaction, dieting, negative affect. Perfectionism also influences eating disorders, women evaluated by other women through what we call fat talk. 
women are naturally, um, their natural weight is actually increasing more over the last century due to better nutrition and medical care. Um, dieting may predict eating disorders because these are the same people that are unhappy with their bodies, but it should be noted that not all dieters are going to have an eating disorder. Negative affect and depression are comorbid with and influence eating disorders. Childhood sexual abuse is associated with eating disorders. People with eating disorders are often ambivalent about recovery. They, they don't care if they get better. This often ends in hospitalization, sometimes in suicide. The most immediate concern with patients who have anorexia nervosa is to restore their weight to a level that is no longer life-threatening. We may have to use an IV tube for feeding them. Uh, treatment may involve SSRIs, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. Again, anorexia nervosa is normally treated with family therapy. Typically, uh, traditionally, uh, using guilting. Uh, they're hurting their families by not eating, so they should stop. So, this does work, but relapse rates are high because they're not doing it for themselves. With bulimia nervosa, CBT is used to change cognitions that initiate a binge cycle. Uh, the goal is to normalize eating behaviors and attack that dichotomous thinking of all or nothing. SSRIs and CBT are commonly used with binge eating disorder. Obesity is now a medical disease and a leading public health concern. Um, influences multiple risk factors for other health concerns like hypertension, usually defined on the basis of the body mass index or the BMI as we call it. Um, a flood, uh, sorry, a food addiction of sorts is what it is. Um, note that um, it's overrepresented. In other words, more people have it if they are black, if they are affluent black, And if they are by affluent, sorry, I, I should uh, specify, high socioeconomic status females, black females in general, high SES black females, and then low SES white females are, are most likely um, to have obesity or to report obesity, we'll say it that way. Not, it's, it's not anything to do with their their race or color or ethnicity. It's um, it's uh, more due to cultural uh, culture and cultural background. Um, genetic predisposition predisposition for weight, weight gain, and metabolism may play a role. The sedentary lifestyle and Western diet are key risk factors for obesity. A genetic mutation in five percent of obese people is associated with binge eating. I'm going to talk about hormones. Leptin and ghrelin. Uh, leptin is produced by, by fat cells and it acts to reduce our intake of food. That's good, right? Increased body fat leads to increased levels of leptin, which leads to decreased food intake. That seems like it works well. When body fat levels decrease, leptin production decreases and food in, intake is stimulated. Okay, you need to eat. Got it. Obesity may result from a leptin resistance in the body. That's a hormone deficiency, a hormone issue. The hormone ghrelin, from the Hindu word meaning growth, is produced by the stomach and stimulates appetite. Ghrelin levels rise before a meal and fall after eating. The prater willi syndrome has chromosomal abnormalities that create very high levels of ghrelin. Most of these people with this syndrome die before age 30 due to obesity related causes. Time pressure in our society decreases exercise and nutritional choices, leading us to less healthy options or no options at all. Large portions uh, of food due to our national culture and our family culture and attitudes uh, are often unhealthy. Um, overfeeding of infants and young children may pre predispose them to weight problems in adulthood, creating extra adipose or fat cells. Being around obese people increases our chances. Um, attitudes about weight, eating patterns, are increased by 57% towards uh, negative patterns. Stress leads to comfort eating or emotional eating, um, which is a sign of conditioning. The stress triggers eating.
Uh, binge eating may cause obesity. Let's think about how that would happen. The thin ideal may lead to dieting, which leads to binge eating, which can lead to weight gain. How do we treat all this? Lifestyle modifications. Okay, lifestyle modifications. Long term, slow change lifestyle modifications. Diet, exercise, behavior therapy that is healthy, built for the long term. Not just a fad diet that can be used for a month or two, but something that you can, you know, and, and this is what parents should do. They should teach their children to eat healthily for the rest of their lives. Uh, but we often want to do things for a month and then quit. And medications work. Bariatric surgery works. So these lifestyle modifications need to be a low calorie diet or a lower calorie diet. Just focus on small incremental changes. Exercise. Uh, behavioral intervention. Uh, most diet programs don't work long term. Relapse is high after weight loss. Losing weight means less energy expenditure less weight to carry around, right? Which slows the decline of weight. Hunger increases with weight loss. So it's like fighting a losing battle sometimes. Medications usually involve an ap appetite suppressant and uh, nutrient blockers, uh, fat absorption blockers. Bariatric surgery, also known as uh, g gastric bypass surgery, normally, is the most effective long-term treatment for people who are morbidly obese. This reduces the storage capacity of the stomach and shortens the intestine uh, normally. So think about treatment and prevention. We just talked a little about treatment, more about prevention, energy expenditure, and reduced food intake. Think about some, some key ideas here. 100 less calories per day or walk an extra mile. Eat three fewer bites of food with each meal. Take the stairs. Combine a meeting with a walk. Park further from your destination. Sleep more. Then you know undersleeping can cause weight gain. We need some changes in public policy as well. Improving opportunities for physical activity. Regulating food advertising aimed at children. Prohibiting the sale of fast food and soft drinks in schools. And subsidizing the sale of healthful foods. No matter what health reform we have or health initiative in society, the Affordable Care Act or replacement or repeal or, or whatever, doctors, politicians need to be focusing, I would say, one key issue uh, to start with. It's, it's very obvious. A uh, big money maker is high fructose corn syrup. This is not good for our bodies, um, but it's in almost everything these days. Uh, it's a major money maker for corporations but it um, is leading our society to uh, leading our society into a diabetic coma. Uh, a lot of us are going to be suffering from diabetes in the future, a lot of our kids, if we do not change the types of things that we put into our bodies. Um, thank you. Go have a healthy meal. Take care. See you next time.